filter bag is inserted, mm -hmm. and below it is a trap, you know, fill, and another screen. Uh, and it's kind of like a water separator. There's nothing that's there's nothing that's vacuuming it or or pressing it. It's just gravity. So yeah, it's, we always so recommend to wait for a little bit after the third or fourth load. This is almost full, and this thing will tell you if you've run three loads. It'll tell you to empty the drawer. How many loads do you think that is now? Is that that's, three? that's three or four. Gloves on. They'll take that bag, tie it off, and throw it right in here. And that's you can see one. You can see one. things, Tom, before you run that load. This machine will only accept one Sharps container. It's got to be two gallon. Preferably the ones that we sell. Only because those are the only ones that we found that fit in there that the blades will catch. There's a press on the top of here so when he closes that door that chamber rotates up into the, into the horizontal position and then the press pushes it down. And that's how those blades start to claw at that plastic as they circulate and grab. Some of the Sharps containers, especially the ones that are made of recycled plastic, tend to become taffy. And I don't know if you've tried any of those before you bought these, but they'll grab and they'll twist and they won't break. They'll turn into like taffy almost and they'll just wrap around the blade and then you got to go in and chip, them, chip it out. So those are a no-no. Recycling's good, but mm -hmm. the plastic doesn't break up that well. And then he'll have even larger pieces than what you saw down there, still in the chamber. What's the big deal? Nothing. You just put you put another Sharps container or bag, run the load again, and eventually those bigger pieces will chop up. He's uh, he's going to select the waste type. So he'll he'll hit this. Uh, you hit the start. You hit the start button. And then the machine, machine asked them, do you want to do sharps or do you want mm -hmm. to do a red bag? Mm -hmm. Or other. Or other and other is reverse. And it'll ask them to run it, it'll say yes, and then the thing starts filling. And it'll tell you throughout the cycle what it's doing. Mm -hmm. You know, in a second here it'll tell you right, right now it's gonna start shredding. So the, the blades go into going to action, it's gonna start chopping. The liquid has already been entered into the chamber. Necessary to do the disinfection. See, the, 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 the problem with 
disinfection and sterilization in the past is if you've got a container like this to throw in, and imagine this being plastic, if you just threw it in there and mixed in chemicals, guess what? It's not going to treat what's in here because it's not going to penetrate it. With the grinding, you grind it up, you expose the surfaces as best you can through grinding. And that exposure to the chemical is at a higher level because you're, you're grinding up, which enables us to, to uh, disinfect. There's a discharge that, that tray we saw just tilted over and dumped everything into that, into that bit, that, that container down there. And now it's just cleaning itself out. So it'll, it'll tell us here shortly. So you get a little whiff of the uh, chemical down there. Yeah, that's where the chemical goes in. But it smells pleasant. Yeah, this is a bunker. Here's empty. Alright. Okay. A little bit of leftover liquid, a little bit of leftover debris, but nothing, nothing considerable. And then you got a really pure. Gives everybody. Yeah, and, and, and there's that. That is relatively dry. Yeah. You know what I mean? Some some loads will come out. Right. Saturated, but yeah, that's what the filter bag's for. You see the back holes, the metal pieces that have the holes. That's where the blades come back up and catch the catch the plastic. 